Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. I create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be covering a overview and demo of Azure AD Cloud Sync. Before I get into it here though, if you are interested in a lot of information around Microsoft in the MSP space, be sure to subscribe. Getting into it here though, today I'm covering Azure AD Cloud Sync. If you are familiar and have been using Azure AD Connect, you should be interested in learning more about this particular service that just became GA. Azure AD Connect, as you know, allows you to extend your local environment and identities into the cloud for managing users. And it does allow you to do things like password synchronization and things of that nature so that you can basically extend those identities and license them within Microsoft's cloud environment as well. With Azure AD Cloud Sync, they're extending this and, and moving it into a lightweight agent that you can install on your local DCs as well too. One of the major benefits that I see here in this particular list is it does allow the support of multiple forests that aren't necessarily um, able to see the same network. So you are able to connect them with this particular service and add multiple agents onto that platform and into the, your domain controller so that you can sync these environments up to a single Active Directory tenant. Up top there you notice this is the AD Connect architecture that was not supported and is now with this which is highly important for M&A activity as well if you acquire another customer and you want to merge their tenants or you want to be able to connect multiple DCs to the same Active Directory environment. So those are some of the main benefits there, but some additional benefits here, you do have the ability to have coexistence of an Active Directory environment syncing with AD Connect and another syncing with AD Cloud Sync. You are able to convert an AD Connect environment to AD Cloud. It is a little bit more complicated and there's many steps to that, which I'm not going to showcase here, but I'll link a guide below of how you would go about doing that. You manage this configuration and the syncing in the actual setup of it within Azure AD, which I think is cool because then you don't have to pop into the local DC and run the wizard to basically configure the environment or make modifications to it over time. There's no more 30 minute sync window, so you're able to basically sync up in a couple of minutes. In my testing, after I added a new user or made any changes to existing users, it took about five minutes to visualize that within the 365 environment. The other cool piece for security purposes is they created a hybrid identity admin role within Azure AD. So you don't have to basically assign a global admin to be able to manage this configuration. And then you don't have to worry about somebody remoting into your DC as well. It's some considerations there for some people that I know that would be beneficial as well too. Some of the detractors though, uh, they don't support any write back capabilities today. So both password and device write back is not supported. That may be something they add in the future, but that might be a deal breaker for some of you out there looking to configure this. More so though, the one that was kind of a deal breaker for me was there's no advanced customization for attribute flows within the configuration and setup. And you'll see that here within the actual portal when I do the demo for you. But essentially, if you're familiar with this and you've experienced some of the pains of AD Connect, it's one, when you're looking at configuring an environment where the users already exist in 365 and you're looking to sync them from your local Active Directory and perform this soft match. And you'll see on the right hand side here, I have an example where it creates this, this numbering um, at the end of the user or this hyphen in between them, which is not exactly what you want. You want them to perform the soft match and there's no way to actually go ahead and, and customize the attributes to define the source anchor like you would in the AD Connect wizard that allows you to kind of work your way around that to perform soft matches. So you would have to perform PowerShell commands necessarily prematurely across all of your users to map that object good with the one in the 365 environment, which is really a pain. So don't know that you would want to do that if you already have the users in that environment. It's a lot of extra work to do so, but it might be worth it if you're able to sync multiple environments that aren't in the same forest or something like that. Um, additionally there, you are able to remediate this bottom issue. So just to clarify, this is something where you've synced up and you've 
not set this ms mailbox GUI to null and you get this error after you've licensed the user that their mailbox couldn't be set up i went through that a lot with um, migrating environments so you can still delete that attribute or set it to null just in general um, but again it's something that you do have to consider in doing that within the admin environment and then also the last piece there is there's no Azure AD uh, domain services support so that's a consideration you'll just want to keep that in mind I'll link below Microsoft support article which kind of defines like what's a part of a Azure AD cloud sync versus what's a part of Azure AD connect just so you see it uh, as far as comparison side by side. Right now though, I'm gonna go ahead and pop into a test account so we can see this firsthand for the setup and actually seeing the synchronization within the admin portal. So I'll be right back. Okay, so I'm here within a test tenant and I'm in the custom domain just to show you that I do have a verified custom domain. That is one of the prerequisites that I mentioned there. The next thing we're gonna do is go under AD Connect and we're gonna click on Manage Azure AD Cloud Sync. From here, we're going to click on Download Agent and just agree to the terms that we're having this executable. All right, from the wizard here, we're going to click on Next. It'll ask us to authenticate with our global admin credentials in our Azure Active Directory environment. Here, if you're familiar with the other AD Connect service, they ask you to create a custom service account or a new one that they generate here. I do recommend you just leave this at create just so that you don't have to worry about managing passwords or anything like that that would break the connection. And so we're just going to enter in the Domain admin credentials here. Click next. We're going to click on add directory. All right, we're good there, and we'll click next and then confirm. Here we're referencing that it can take up to two minutes to finish this installation, so I'll be back when that's done. Okay, so we're done here. We can click on exit. And now we'll just click on review all agents here in the admin center. And we see we have this one set up. So that's great. Go back here and just refresh this page. We'll click on new configuration. And this is the one we want to sync here. We want to enable password hash. So we'll click create. So here for scope, by default, it's going to include all users, which most likely you don't want to do. I never did when I set up the previous AD Connect settings before. Most likely you're going to select certain organizational units here that you want to scope this to, and they want you to add it by the distinguished name of the object. You can add one to many. So if you're unfamiliar with how to find the distinguished name, you can go into users and groups within your domain controller here. And from there, you'll want to make sure the view is set to advanced features. And then you can just right click on the OUs that you would want to sync up. Click on attribute editor, click on distinguish name, and just copy this right here. We'll pop back in. We'll just add this here. They do allow you to add, you know, one to many, like I mentioned here. I just want to sync this OU though. I recommend that you do just sync one OU to initially so that you can basically test that this is working okay. You can map additional attributes as well here too if you really wanted to. This is the attribute editor you might be familiar with with using the um, previous integration, but in this particular one, I'm not actually going to be doing that. And that's unfortunate. So I'm going to go back here and just do this again. So here we can test the user from our on-prem environment here, the test provisioning. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that user's name. Under properties again, attribute editor. 
distinguish name. Provision. Great. So we've got everything successfully tested there. We've got our export details here. And we see that they went through OK. And we'll click on finish here. So now that we know that's done, we can put a notification email here if we want. But I'm going to leave that blank just for the purposes of this testing. And then we're going to go ahead and enable this and click on save. You'll notice the status here up in the corner. We've got our successful configuration saved. And we now see that it's healthy. We have some logs over here as well that we can see. This information here has some steps that are related to the provisioning event and all the details are listed inside here as well. Okay, so Microsoft touts that it takes about a couple hours sometimes to fully populate this information. For me, it happened in the, the visual aspect here in about 10 minutes after I set up the connection. The other thing that I tested as well too that I wanted to make sure wasn't any different uh, as far as benefits is the situation where you try to soft match users and you have to match up their uh, unique GUIs there and, and otherwise they create duplicate users in the sense that like this use case here where they create this random number and string after underneath or underneath the actual user and create duplicate users versus like actually performing the soft match. So nothing really changed there. You still have to follow those steps um, that you would normally do to configure that so that you do the soft matching and then sync up existing users based off of those certain attributes. But um, unfortunately, I was hoping that might have uh, been something that was, was looked at. But if you think about it technically, it doesn't really make sense that this would do that too. But it is cool that you can manage here within the cloud environment. You can simply refresh to see all the statuses and see more information about this and download these logs as well too. You can create the other agents in here or new configurations from the other agents from other forced that aren't in um, you know related, related databases or have visibility into each other, which is really cool too for the M&A and activity that I mentioned earlier. But that's everything I want to show for the high level of this. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, like I mentioned earlier as well, please subscribe if you guys have more questions around Microsoft 365 and the MSP space. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.